Coaches, welcome back to the 92 Mesh Group. Uh, this is Coach Coltharp out of North Carolina. And tonight I thought I would do something a little fun and just talk about three ways that you can attack a defense using early formation or three by one. And you know, a lot of people do a lot of different things, but you know, I like to kind of have a little bit of fun. And one of the first things that we're going to talk about is, is something that I learned from a Coach Mummy back in 2014 when he did his um, Air Raid 2.0 uh, clinic for us here in North Carolina. I, um, a lot of you guys may not know this, but in 2014, um, 92 Mesh Group put on the uh, North Carolina Air Raid Clinic, and we brought Coach Mummy in. And about that time is when he was going to uh, SMU with June Jones. And so if you go to the very first kind of videos on our channel were, were the presentations, and it says Air Raid 2.0, and Coach Mummy talks about what he did when he tried to incorporate um, you know, the air raid concepts with some of the, uh, the run and shoot stuff that, that Coach Jones wanted to do. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to, to kind of look at some of the three by one stuff. And, and I'll put a link to a couple of those air raid videos in the video so you can, uh, clinic videos in here so you can go back, back into the channel and look at them because they were really good. There's about three hours of information there and he did a wonderful job. Um, if you ever get a chance to get Coach Mummy in on a clinic, you should do it because he gets in there, he takes his shoes off, he gets on the board, and he draws and talks and, until uh, until either you, you got everything you want or or until time is up. And um, he's just a really good person. So let's let's look at three ways to attack defenses in three by one. The first way is going to be a way that's close to my heart. The second way we'll talk about. Uh, one of the ways Coach Mummy does it. And in a third way, we'll talk about something that I learned when I went to Lane College. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I like to do when we get this kind of front here. And, and I like to throw the fast screen to number two. And so what we do is we block most dangerous, most dangerous. He's going to bounce and replace. And then we block our regular flat screen. Flat for five, run the alley. And... Uh, you know, we'll swing that way and throw it immediately to the uncovered. He's going to get in and get out. And so it's just basically Randy out of three by one. It's screened to number two, so it'd be H screen there. And, uh, you know, we just throw our regular key screen that we would if we were in regular. Everybody else just zones that off. I, I just love to do that, especially if number two is uncovered and, and they're playing kind of that just displaced with the safety back. Now, if they do this number where they want to you know, kind of roll down and back up type deal and play more of a 3D, then we'll just throw it to number one on that. So that's the first way I like to do it, you know, kind of throw the fast screen in three by one. The second way is kind of one of the Coach Mummy concepts. And what he did is he started combining mesh with the run and shoot routes. Let's just put a 3-4 up here just for giggles. And, and so what he did is he took the mesh route with Y and X, and then obviously they would sit or climb depending on what was going on. R would always go this way in this situation. And then he would put a combination with H and Z, whether it was smash or switch, which is a big run and shoot play, or one that I used to like to run, which was sail. And so he would just read one, two, three, four, just like he would regular mesh. He was gonna read the high route, then this would take the place of the intermediate route. Um, if you were running smash, you would run, you, you know, you would read the corner route first, just like you would in regular progression. And, and I think, that is something that you really have to understand when it comes to tags. Guys, if you're tagging something and it changes the progression, it's not a tag. It's a new concept. You have to, you have to understand that. That's the difference between, um, I had a conversation with a guy the other day. He was like, you know, you air raid guys, you, you say you only run 12 plays, but you have like 75 tags. Yeah, but it's the same play. The quarterback's progression never changes. If I go 95 Z post, that doesn't mean Z is now the primary. It just tells the quarterback that if the cross isn't there, he can go to Z instead of the curl. 
Okay, so you got to understand if a tag changes the progression, it's not really a tag. Now that may cause some, some problems with some of you guys. If you disagree, talk to me about it in the comments down below. We'll have a discussion. And if it's a good enough discussion, you know, we can go back in and have another video, maybe do a live, uh, a live stream and talk about it. But, you know, in my opinion, if the tag changes the progression, it's not a tag, it's a concept. And that means you're getting out of the idea of CBA. And you guys know how I feel about that, you know, cost benefit analysis. And so this was a way for Coach Mummy to control his CBA. He still had mesh, but then he also had a smash concept, which they were already throwing, or a sale concept, which he was already throwing. And he would just get it three by one and do that. And so, and then the last thing that I kind of like to do a little bit out of three by one, especially out of early, and uh, we talked a little bit about what to do with athletic quarterbacks and the last thing that I like is to actually run a little speed option. So we'll get them in here, especially if we get kind of this deal where they're overloading to the trip side and we don't have an overhang player. We'll zone everything off backside, take an inside step here. He's going to punch and come flat for this guy. And then we're just going to attack down the line of scrimmage and try to, and try to pitch off the end as quick as possible. Uh, you know, that's just kind of a, and really what you're doing is you're box counting. How many guys are outside of the end? If there's nobody outside of the end, you know, check, check, uh, check speed option and get it in there. And if you got a pretty athletic tackle, especially if you got wide splits, he's just going to zone in and put a hand in there so he can get there. We don't want to do that because you really don't care about the movement. A stalemate's good enough. But then when he comes out of here, the key coaching point is for him to try to get flat and be athletic because he's got to go where that guy's going to go, not where he's at. So, that, hey, look, listen, that's three ways to attack uh, defenses out of early formation. Hopefully it gives you something to little think about. Um, I really want to thank you guys a lot for supporting the channel. We're really, really close. We're less than a mesh call away from 1,000 subscribers in less than two months. We're really excited about that. Um, got some new stuff. If you like the shirts, uh, comment down below. We've got a couple of these we can put up on the um, – the website also we got a couple of new hat designs that we're looking at the 53 3 series uh, flex hat we can get it in blue and black and white um, so we'll look at putting those things up there if there's something you're interested in hit me up with a DM um, you know it's just something to kind of get the brand out there just to kind of show that we that we love the air raid and um, like I said just uh, down in the comments below down below do you believe tags mean concepts or tags mean plays uh, once again, check us out on 92meshgroup.com. You're home for the air raid on the internet. And as always, spin it to win.